It may be after hours for your business, but it's never after hours for the Buena Park Police Department. This is Crime Watch. Hello and welcome to Crime Watch. I'm Jane Cameron with Sergeant Chris Nunez of the Buena Park Police Department and Officer Bailey, who we'll be talking to in a minute. Sergeant Nunez, I always find it interesting that uh, several of the cars that are out that the police department puts out every night, there's just one officer in the car. How does that change what goes on in the field when they're on patrol or find something? Um, well. Typically, uh, most calls we go on uh, are a, a two-unit call because we, we run one-man cars, or one-officer cars, I should say. Um, so as, as a result, um, almost every call we go on, we're contacting, you know, we're contacting the public. Um, so for, for safety reasons, you know, that dispatches two officers. And that's how, I think, a little bit how we came here. You heard Officer Bailey go out on a call, and it is a little bit darker around in this area. Um, Officer Bailey, what, where are we exactly? This is one of the industrial areas in my beat. We're near the 91 and 5 freeway. There's a lot of closed businesses here, and it's after hours, so I come through here pretty often to check on, on the businesses. What are you looking for besides just there's like practically no one back here? Any kind of suspicious activity. We've had a number of thefts uh, from businesses after hours, so I'm just coming to check the integrity of the businesses. Okay, and so you happen to find an individual here. What caught your attention besides the fact there was somebody back here? Well, what caught my attention initially was the bicycle in the middle of the street. And then uh, as I was looking around trying to figure out what that was doing there, I noticed the gentleman standing behind the bushes. That's a little suspicious because it's behind the bushes, it's up against the side of the building, there's no doors or anything besides the windows over there, and I thought, you know, I should check him out and make sure he wasn't up to anything bad. Oh, as we were here, eventually he was able to leave. Uh, what did you find out about this particular person? Well, I learned that he's homeless, and uh, he lives across behind us in the field um, next to the freeway, and he's over here trying to use the electrical outlet to charge his cell phone. Sergeant Nunez, are, we, are you finding more situations like that where people are living, um, you know, by the roadway or in vehicles? 
Yeah, in, interestingly, with this particular situation, um, this man is uh, is married, um, and and quite frankly, I don't know if it's uh, an actual lawful marriage. He he did mention that his wife was was back there in that field, um, and uh, she receives um, a monthly SSI check. So, I guess their cycle, the way he was explaining, is uh, she gets paid. Um, that enables them to move into a motel for as long as the money lasts. Um, and typically they're able to stay in, inside under roof for about two weeks. And then uh, it's back out on the street until the next, you know, the next uh, paycheck comes. So the, you know, the homeless part, uh, um, well actually they're, they're homeless all the time, but uh, having to stay out on the street is, uh, is something that they, they just bear until the next check comes in. Earlier today when we were driving around, we saw what looked like a few people that were living in their cars as well. Uh, are there any uh, municipal codes or violations about that in the city of Buena Park? Yeah, the city has uh, camping ordinances um, that, uh, that do pertain to living in your car on, on, the, on the street. Um, so that would what differentiates that from someone just simply sleeping in their in their car is um, you know you'd, you'd have to be able to if, if you were intending to to actually cite or enforce the, the capping ordinances articulate that um, you know that that's just not someone that happened to to take a nap because they were tired or um, you know that that sort of thing it, it's pretty apparent just like what we saw earlier there was there were several cars with with um, filled with personal property and you know you can you can tell when when a vehicle is being is being lived in um, you know unfortunately there is a particular a look that goes along with that uh, and when someone's uh, all their possessions are, are in the car and sometimes they're small cars I think one of the ones we saw earlier was a, a small Honda car um, you know the 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 only available seat to sit in often is, is the driver's seat. The rest of the car is filled with stuff. What do you do when, you know, when you find somebody who's maybe living on the street, there's really, you just make sure that they're safe where they are? Yeah, I check on his well-being, make sure he's, first of all, not committing any crimes. Check on his well-being and give him any advice or information that I can. And there's, there's, there's a few resources out there. Um, specifically in Orange County, where they can they can call and ask for assistance with shelter or food or uh, medical aid, anything like that. Um, and this guy, in this instance, this guy happened to be a veteran too. So we talked to him about possibly us utilizing the VA. And uh, yeah. it seems like the officers have to be just a resource of information for all the people they meet on the street. Yeah, that's true. It, uh, it was interesting in this case. This. Uh, this guy was uh, knowledgeable about 211, um, not 411 or 911, but there's there's a you know three-digit information number you can call 211 and get uh, a variety of information um, from housing to jobs to you know medical uh, assistance and and so on. He was he was aware of that um, and uh, was also aware that he potentially has services available to him. Uh, through the VA, um, you, you know, he was talking about uh, having uh, some type of medical uh, problem issue that that was preventing him from working. Um, so he was aware that you know at least potentially he could go to the VA and, and get some help there. So you know it's interesting that there are a lot of people out here on the on the street that if you know if they worked hard enough at it, they could they could find resources available to to them and you know they're kind of hanging on just you know just by a thread with his his wife um, receiving SSI he was explaining uh, a, you know a condition that she has that that um, that provides her that disability uh, income so it's it's a shame but as officer Bailey was mentioning um, you know he's back here in the first place because this industrial area closes down at night and there are a variety of concerns that we have um, from, um, you know, there are vehicles parked out here from vehicle theft or, or tampering to actual theft from the buildings themselves. 
Um, you know, we, we get a lot of calls for, um, uh, for people stealing um, copper wiring, for stealing, uh, uh, you know, appliances that are outside of the, of the building, like uh, HVAC system, that, that sort of thing. So, and, and because it is a secluded area, a lot of times people will come back here for, you know, any variety of, of reasons. So um, it is an area that does get regular patrol. And I knew that, um, that it, it's dark back here, and it sounded like, uh, like Officer Bailey was, you know, was alone. So we, we were close. That's the reason why I, I came to, uh, to back him up. Sergeant Nunez, you mentioned earlier about the 211 system. What exactly is that? It's a um, it's a resource that anybody can call, just like you're calling information, um, where you actually talk to a, a person, an operator, that has uh, lists of resources. So, you know, if you if you need help with with um, medical assistance, you need help with um, housing, you need help with even employment. Um, it just it just goes on and on. Any any type of resource that you can imagine, um, the operators are, are trained and have access, uh, like a, a catalog, if you will, of a variety of resources in in the your area where they can they can direct you to. Two one one is a great resource and. You may want to find out a little bit more about it, so we have a video that you can watch right now. It's 24 hours, seven days a week, and um, we're here for all needs. We talked to Judy Bowden, Executive Director of 211 OC, about how the folks in the field can help utilize such a great asset. 211 is a phone number that people can call to get into our call center, which provides information referral services for people in need. So if they're looking for housing, for food, for um, rental assistance, after school programs, elder care, they can just dial 211 and get to us and we'll help them find those resources. During a big wildfire we activate along with the county and watch all the press releases to find out where road closures might be, where to go for lost pets, um, where you can go for sandbags or water, where you might have to uh, evacuate to, where some shelters might be if your area is uh, destroyed. And we're, we're trying to relieve 911 from those non-life-threatening calls and be of assistance in that way. We do have little pocket cards, marketing cards that the firemen can carry uh, and distribute those. And on those, they have just simple, you know, shelter, food, uh, child care, and just little reminders of what our services are um, and just to be aware of us so that they can help folks and not feel that they have to themselves. I understand a lot of times people try to know what resources are out there and try to provide those resources and that's what we're here for. We're to reduce redundancy and to be a single phone number to help people find help. Thank you for calling 211. How can I help you? I was told to call you guys and see if you had any resources for rental assistance. 211, largely funded by the United Way, provides access to a confidential information and referral service that connects you with a broad range of community, government, and faith-based services in your local area. My daughter's been very ill since September off and on, and I have like hundreds of thousands of dollars in doctor bills. Am I gonna get an eviction tomorrow? 
I just don't know. I'm going to see if I can find some resources in your area. The trained professionals at 211 provide referrals to services such as rent and utility assistance, shelter and housing connections for the homeless, nutritional assistance and basic food benefits, and transportation coordination and assistance. I was told to call you folks. Uh, going to have some problems making a, a electric payment and everything. You're a 50-year-old man and you have to call your dad to pay the electric bill. There are so many families that were stable, that were happy, that could, you know, focus on their dreams. And now they're focused on, how am I going to feed my family for the next week? How am I going to pay the bill? You know, how am I going to avoid disconnection of a service? 211 is available in most communities by phone, and in some cases over email, text, chat, and online databases. Um, yeah, I was calling uh, to inquire about energy. Yeah. I work for the Alpha Plasma Center. They laid off 1,500 people. I walked into the house and she was sitting in the kitchen in the dark and I was like, mom, what's wrong? And like she was crying because she just didn't know what she was going to do for food for the next couple of uh, weeks. Okay, the only agencies that I'm showing of having any funding are Neighborhood House and Human Solutions. 211 is also available to provide immediate information and direction to resources in times of disaster, including hurricanes and wildfires, and emergency needs such as flu shots and employer layoffs. The United Way and 211 both provide post disaster support and follow up. I am looking for housing for myself and my son. I am a recent widow. I came home from work one day and my son looks at me and says, Dad's in the back of that ambulance. They said within him being there not even two hours that he was septic and that he was going to die. He was sick on a Friday and died Easter Sunday. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. So it's going to be a little rough the next couple days. I'm going to be staying at the shelter I don't know the name of. People ask me where I li lived at school, but I just s said I lived in the same place or by that place. So like they wouldn't like make fun because my school is very like judgmental. They'll make f fun of you if you live somewhere that isn't Regular or normal? Okay, I can do a, uh, a housing connection search for things that might be near you. It's a huge education moment for us to really be a mirror for what's happening in the community. So that does put us in a very unique and I think somewhat powerful position to just say, this is what's happening. We can help you problem solve and come up with some solutions, but more our role is illuminating what the issues are. And that's, I think, a unique spot that's not Democratic or Republican is saying, hey, here's what's happening to your neighbors. We want to help you come up with some solutions so that it doesn't have to be this way. Thank you for calling 211. How can I help you today? Our water has been turned off for three days. The power was shut off. The gas has been shut off now, too. I'm not used to being able to not provide basic things like well, water. So one agency that um, you could contact in your area is called Community Action. We're going to get electricity turned back on today and your gas today. It's all going to be today. Oh, so I will so be much. right back in just a second, OK? I'm dumbfounded. <laughs> oh, no. Really? You hit a light switch? <laughs> Let me do. Oh, my god. <laughs> See this? Two on one has been helping us out dramatically. Without all that, I don't know what we would have done. I really don't. Probably on the streets, not be able to eat or anything. I mean, so I am thankful for that. What the callers tell me is it is such a relief to be able to tell their story to someone who's not going to be judgmental. When I'm talking with people, that is the gift I can give them, is that I'm listening to them, I can be compassionate. Sometimes I'm thrilled when I know I'm sending them to an organization that is specifically going to help that person. And I'm pretty happy when that happens. There are not enough resources in our communities to meet all the needs. Leaders in 211 and the United Way invite you to help fund, support, and join the 211 movement in your community. 211, excellent everywhere, always. The United Way, give, Advocate. Volunteer. Live United.
If you have any questions about tonight's show, you can call the Buena Park Police Department at 562-3901 or check us out on the internet at bppd.com. With Sergeant Chris Nunez of the Buena Park Police Department, I'm Jane Cameron. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like us on the official City of Buena Park Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. There you'll find a little of everything from information about our city services and upcoming events to discounts offered by our entertainment attractions such as Knott's Berry Farm, Medieval Times, and Pirate's Dinner Adventure.